Once you create your custom post type along with its custom fields, you can add some posts. In our example, we have a recipes post type and I added some posts. Look, each recipe has a title, the main content for a short description, the recipe image, preparation time and so on. Now, you need to design how these posts will look like on the front end. The problem is that the default WordPress output misses any custom fields and content, so you're stuck with a title and the main post body like this. No worries, we'll use Toolset to create one content template for displaying all our recipes. It's called a content template because you design the content part while your team defines the rest. Here's how we want our recipes to look like. To start, in the WordPress admin, we go to Toolset Dashboard. In the row for the custom post type, click the button to create a content template. We are now in the content template editor. Here on the right, I will have one recipe post open so it's easier to follow what we are doing. Let's start by adding a container block. It allows us to group multiple blocks and then style the whole section. Look, in the right sidebar, I'll expand the background section and add a nice background color first so that my top section stands out a bit. Next, we want to display our recipe image to the left and our recipe information to the right. For this, we need columns, so I'll insert the toolset grid block and select one layout. Don't worry, you can easily adjust the column width at any time, change the number of columns and tweak other options. OK, time to insert our first field. Let's add a recipe image. I insert the toolset image block. And yes, we want to use a dynamic source. When we visit any recipe post, we want to see the image of that recipe. So, by selecting a dynamic source, our template will dynamically get and display the correct image for the post we are viewing. We select the source, which is the group of custom fields we created for our recipes, and then the custom image field itself. And there it is, our image for the recipe. Nice! It's easy to style toolset blocks. All the options you need are in the right sidebar. For example, we can use the border radius so our image has rounded corners, or we can even make it completely round. And let's add a fancy hover effect to the image. I simply adjust the size for when the hover happens. And when you're editing a template, you can use this drop-down menu at the top to select other posts of this type and see how your design looks like across different posts. Let's now take a look at the front end to see what we have so far. Here is one recipe post. And here's another one. OK, the image is dynamic and things look good, but there are some things I want to change. I want to get rid of the title and the sidebar, and I want my content to stretch to the full width of the main container. The title and sidebar options are defined by a theme. If a theme is integrated with Toolset, you can change the main theme layout options directly in the block editor. For a list of themes integrated with Toolset, go to toolset.com, Documentation, and click Recommended Themes. In this case, I switch to the Document tab and first find the option for the sidebar layout. And then disable the content title because I will add a custom one later. If your theme is not integrated with Toolset, you can change its options on the Appearance Customize page. Please note that different themes will have different customizer options on this page. Also, many themes have their own settings page. OK, while we're here, let's change the background color of our site to white. We can now close the customizer and return to the content template editor. And as we said, let's make our content stretch to the whole width. 
To do this, we need to adjust our container block. To select it, we use the Block Navigation dropdown. Block Navigation lists all the elements in the template and their hierarchy. In the right sidebar, we expand the Advanced section and select the Wide Width option. Another quick look at the front end. And there it is! The sidebar is gone and our content stretches wide. Ok, time to add the rest of our fields. First, let's display the recipe's level of difficulty. As you can see here, it's a taxonomy. To display it, we insert the toolset single field block. For the field type, we select taxonomy and then the one we want to display. In this case, Toolset selected it automatically because it's the only one. Let's also make our taxonomy display as a link to the term archive page. This means that when users click on it, they will go to an archive page that lists all recipes with that level of difficulty. Next, let's display the title of our recipe. Remember, we disabled the title in the theme options previously. We insert a toolset heading block and make it a heading 1 because this is the main title. Then, we turn on the dynamic heading text and select the post title field. Now, let's insert the main post content which we use as a short description of our recipe. We can use the toolset single field block again, but this time select the standard field and then the Post Content option. Next, we have custom fields for preparation time and cooking time. We could use the single field blocks again, but let me show you another option. This time, we'll use the Fields and Text block. As you can see, it's basically a What You See Is What You Get editor, but its power lies in Toolset's ability to display dynamic content. Look, we click the button to add a field or view and we get a list of all standard WordPress fields, custom fields, taxonomies and other dynamic data in our site. Let's insert our prep time custom field and select to display the row value from the database. A row value means exactly that. In this example, we get a simple row number without a label or anything else. OK. So we get a preparation time in minutes. And because we use the fields and text block, we can add a custom label and units and bold the label as well. We now insert the cooking time in the same manner. This time I will add the label first, insert the cook time custom field, and then add the unit. OK, now let's display the recipe's ingredients. We'll add a nice heading first, so we insert the toolset heading block and make it a heading 3. Let's add a nice border to its bottom. I expand the Style Settings section and under the Border Settings I click the Disconnect button so that I can adjust the color and thickness of borders on each side separately. I'll just add a subtle 1 pixel bottom border. It's a bit too close to the heading, so I will also add a bit of margin and padding. Nice! As you can see, our ingredients are actually a repeating field. It means we can have multiple values for it, which is convenient when you need to display a list of things. To display it, we insert the toolset repeating field and as the source, we select the ingredients custom field. Ok, we're almost done. We just need to add the cooking instructions. As you can see, it's a custom what you see is what you get field. Let's add a heading first. Of course, we use the toolset heading block. 
Finally, we can use the toolset single field block again and select our custom field called instructions. And that's it! Let's check a few recipe posts on the front end. Very nice! All our recipes use the same dynamic template that we visually designed using Toolset.